Okay. The uh, first item to come before us, we have to have a uh, entertain a motion to suspend the rules. So moved by uh, Legislator Denise Ford, seconded by Vincent Muscarella, Legislator. Uh, all in favor of suspending the rules, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any against? Okay, it's passed. So we suspended the rules. And the item coming before us is item 82-15. It's an ordinance we, to require owners, leases, tenants, and occupants of commercial real property that abut county roads to remove snow and ice from the paved sidewalks. Uh, motion by Denise Ford, seconded by Vincent Muscarella. Uh, on the item, any questions on the item from legislators? Uh, Legislator Laura Cohen has a question. Is anybody here to discuss this? Okay, this is generated by the majority, this, this legislation. And uh, yes, sir, you read your name into the, uh, put the mic on, read your name and, and department. Uh, Scott Tusa, Chief Fire Marshal, Nassau County. Okay, Scott. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Legislator Laura Cohen has a question. Yes, first, first a comment. I, I guess we all agree that this is very well timed because <laughs> I'm sure that you are all getting a lot of calls, as am I. Who is responsible for enforcement of shoveling sidewalks Absolutely. on county roads? And we think it's the town, the town thinks it's us, or is it the LIRR who's in charge? So this is great that this is before us today. And just, um, I had a, a conversation with the majority earlier. Just to be clear, the marshals will be in charge of enforcement. Yes, that, that's correct. I've been asked to, uh, uh, to take on the enforcement of it. Uh, reason being, um, we're in most of the businesses um, as it is on a daily basis. We're visiting businesses and uh, we can either find a situation or receive a complaint and uh, deal with it accordingly. Okay, and this does not apply to, to homeowners? No, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any, uh, any other? Yes, Legislator Denise Ford. Commissioner Tucson, thank you very much uh, for having the fire marshals, you know, be become the, the enforcers of this um, uh, issue uh, because it's something that has been a long time coming. You know, we've been, we've been trying to get this uh, instituted where we can then enforce businesses and hopefully one day we'll have the residents also complying uh, to clear their sidewalks off because it has been a safety hazard. Uh, for many of the residents who live throughout Nassau County. So I want to thank you very much. And I also want to thank my council who worked so very hard on this and to make sure that we got to this point. And um, I look forward to it being passed and, and to the enforcement of it. And thank you. Are there any other legislators with any comments? Is there any public comment? There being none, all in favor, indicate. Oh, we do have a public comment. Would you read your name, ma'am, into the. I'll turn to push the button, put the mic on. There you go. Tanya Lukasik. And you're from Cassie, you uh, said? <clears throat> um, from Operation Stop. It's a community-based organization. I have just a quick uh, discussion. My name is Tanya Lukasik. I'm a Nassau County resident. I'm also the director of the community organization Operation Stop. Our organization of over 1,200 members is extremely perplexed regarding the tremendous disconnect and double standard that presently exists at the moment on our county roadways. County roadways where millions of dollars were spent to excessively remove trees and replace concrete sidewalks under the header of accessibility only to at present leave these same sidewalks impassable with feet of snow, leading to a pedestrian being fatally struck on County Road West John Street on January 28th. A resident of Woodweir recently recounted a story where her son was forced to walk in the street of Peninsula Boulevard at County Road on his way to Woodmere Middle School. Residential and commercial property owners failed to clear the snow on these roadways. I point out this story not just because of the public safety hazards present on the county road, but also because of the systemic failure it revealed at the county level when she attempted to address this situation. In her own words, Woodmere Middle School said they couldn't help. The fourth police precinct said it was a town issue. The town said it was a county road. County Department of Public Works said they don't do sidewalks. I called Ed Mangano's office and I was told that the town of Hempstead cannot enforce their own snow, remo snow removal rules on county road sidewalks. Mr. Mangano's representative, Doug, said that pedestrians just need to be careful. This is unacceptable. It is also backward. Language of this sort, directives of this nature, the endless cycle of shifting responsibility leaves maintenance and clearance of sidewalks on county roads completely unaddressed, unenforced, and neglected both for commercial and residential property owners, as well as for municipal municipally owned land, including sumps and parks. 
This ordinance today is designed to provide a directive for commercial property abutting county roads. However, unfortunately, it only addresses half of the pressing urgent problem. Almost every county road in NASA hosts a hybrid of commercial and residential property. Four issues arise. County roads are not properly identified with signage. The public is unaware of which roadways are deemed county roadways and who is responsible for clearance and maintenance. Number two, the administrative code has not been updated online since 2010. It does not include links to updated associated local laws or any ordinances on record. An ordinance is useless if the public doesn't know it exists, nor can it obtain information about its clauses. Commercial and residential property front and back faces, back faces county roads. This ordinance does not specify how it will address this. Does this ordinance include back facing property? Does it include properties that abut the roadway? Who is responsible for curb ramp clearance? Same goes for crosswalks. An overwhelming majority of residential property back faces these roadways, rendering snow removal, clearance, and maintenance that much more complex and virtually impossible. It is unreasonable for residents to be expected to clear these sidewalks, and this ordinance only one-sidedly addresses commercial property. I have several questions that I want to pose. First, where will this ordinance be housed? Where will it be located? How can residents, commercial property owners access it? Number two, how are violations communicated to the fire marshal by the public? How will the, number three, how will the county actively monitor sidewalk conditions? Number four, how will the county enforce its own ordinance for violators? Number five, how is count the county addressing the issue of snow clearance on residential property abutting roadways? I know someone just mentioned that this was a step in the right direction, but the reality is somebody was killed on January 28th because residential and commercial property owners did not clear their sidewalks. And to date, does an ordinance exist for residential property owners? And if not, how do we get to that point? Your three minutes have expired. I thank you for your, uh, your comments, and they are taken under consideration. And this is the, right now, this is the only thing we can do that we are sure that we can enforce, and we do have the enforcement with the, the fire marshal's office, so we do have, half your questions have already been answered by the, uh, our, our little presentation, but uh, we are looking into the residential also. Uh, right now, we don't have the answers on that, so until we do, we can't produce well, we legislation that, that wouldn't, wouldn't stick. You know, we can't just make stuff up. I'm sure, of course, and I know that this, uh, this discussion about county roadways has been going on. You can check Newsday archives for over 15 years. Um, the fact that Absolutely. somebody had to die for this to actually come to the table is that, unacceptable. That's not the reason it came to the table. That's well, not the reason it came to the table. For We've what been reason? We had very severe winters for the last several years. We've working on this for years. a long, long time. Legislator Ford, would you? Um, I, sure. Thank you very much for coming here. Thank you. you. Know, first of all, this just deals with the enforcement. Who's going to enforce? The towns or the cities will enforce their own. But it is a law that everybody must clear their sidewalks, whether or not you're residential. It, everybody you, is supposed to. Yeah, I understand that. But right now, can somebody show me online or give me a document that says where that law is and how somebody can access it? I spent hours yesterday trying to find information and couldn't it's find possible. anything. Yeah. But there's, no, there's nothing but listed on the fee structures for the Nassau County website. The ordinance only go back for three years. But, These but, ordinances were, were put in place, the original like local right. laws, back they in the used 80s. to. What happened was this has been, and, and you, you know, you're frustrated. Mm -hmm. Do you know how frustrated I am? That I have been trying to get this to this point for 10 years now, okay? This was on the previous administration when this was abandoned. Like it used to be that the towns would do it, and then they realized that they didn't have jurisdiction over sidewalks at abutted county roads. So they stopped the enforcement, and they just enforced their own roads, all right? So it was, like you exactly. said, going, going back and forth, going back and forth, trying to find who would be responsible, trying to find it, working with the administration, uh, trying to get this done, and then finding out who could enforce it, looking at different um, entities within the county government, and that's why I thanked uh, Scott Tuza for the fire marshal stepping up and that they would then enforce this. And yes, it is frustrating. I'd like to see it both commercial and residential, but we have to start somewhere. And right now it is a commercial that we can at least go out, the fire marshals are out there, let's just see how the program works. And then, that the, you know, and the residents themselves are supposed to be, you know, everybody is supposed to clear their sidewalk. Uh, of course. I know I clear mine all the time. And, and, well, and residents were else. also supposed to repair the sidewalks that were damaged by tree roots and didn't. The county was supposed to right. enforce its own administrative code regarding sidewalks and preventively right. repair them and then bill the residents. That didn't happen. Right. And, and, and we overrode you know the code. And, so and I'm not going to... I'm not going to argue with you about that because I agree. I mean, I've seen it, and we're trying to get things done little by little, but we always have to move in the right direction, and I believe that.
that at this point we finally are. And, um, you know, this is something that let's see how it is. You know what? And then next year I'm hoping that you could be back up here and we could talk about the residential enforcement. I don't know if we have in time for next year. I mean, how many more people need to be hit or killed before this happens again? Right. Um, I guess the ordinance is very vague and sparse. The enforcement right. piece, which is what the resident from Woodmere experienced, is something that there's an issue yeah. between the towns and county. I spoke to people yeah. at the town of Oyster Bay and they mentioned they can't touch county roadways or the sidewalks. They have their own code enforcement right. agency. The county does not. And that's why we have So the now. fire department, yeah. I applaud them for taking up this, this initiative, right. but it seems to me like this is going to be a very daunting task. What are the procedures for a resident? Let's say I live next to a commercial property and that sidewalk is not cleared. Who do I, where, where do I go to? Do well, I you know, the fire department? I, I get phone calls from my residents mm -hmm. and that's why, so I know. And now I know that I could call the fire marshals to let them know that such and such a property on such, a, like say on Oyster Boulevard, like I have, whatever, is not cleared. You send somebody out. They can go out, do the inspection. If it's not cleared, give them a fine. You know, because obviously if they're not clearing it, then if you have to pay to clear it, then of course you're going to start making sure that in the future you'll always keep your sidewalks clear. So then, okay, so then that goes back to also just the information piece. How are we informing commercial property owners that this ordinance exists and that we're going to start enforcing it? And also that they are on a county road, because the reality is most people don't know which county roads are county roads. Well, it would be county. published, but I mean, everybody's well, supposed to clear their sidewalks. I, I never know, but, but the reality is it's not happening. And the reality is that the ordinances that are on there to date and the local laws are basically not in a place where somebody can publicly access them very easily. Now anymore. we have some teeth to, to right. the law and we have an enforcing agency. Well, so we, we, it will be uh, happening. And the abutment part that you had asked about, mm -hmm. Even if it's the back of a store or a, uh, a commercial piece of property, that has to be done, whether it's commercial or not. If it's back, anything that abuts yeah. the property, however, okay. county so that, roads. Logistically, that brings up just another issue. On these county roadways, they're mostly four-lane roads. There's a lot of snow. The plows come by, and they take the snow, and they push it to the sidewalk right. where, the, where the fences are, and you've got four to five feet worth of snow drifts. Mm -hmm. To have a person, either per property owner, residential, commercial, whoever it is, go out with the shovel in these areas where the next door neighbor might have not shoveled or the county hasn't cleared the accessible on ramps, it's almost impossible for them to do that task. To go on a county road like South Oyster Bay Road or Old Country Road or somewhere where it's really busy and the cars, 20 to $50,000, uh, 20 to 50,000 cars per day, to have people out there shoveling is not really realistic. It's not going to happen. Like, and to enforce it is not really fair on two, two reasons. You're putting those people at risk for safety issues. And then number two, the county also owns so the you property. So you don't want us to do it, and the school districts the, the, do it. So the, best, it's the best thing to do if it were me on, let's say, using South Oyster Bay Road is to use the county's resources, equipment that the regular homeowner or property owner or residential commercial property owner might not have to get these sidewalks cleared. It's not happening. I mean, on South no. Oyster Bay Road, the only residents, the commercial properties that cleared their areas were the library in Syosset, uh, the Midway Jewish Center and uh, the fire department. They had resources. The other people didn't. So well, how, do you, how do you get this accomplished? Well, you know it's, what? It's, the it's only dangerous. thing I can tell you is I am going to be sending out this notice mm -hmm. to all my Chamber of Commerces mm -hmm. so that they could let their local business members know mm -hmm. that this ordinance has been passed and this, this law will be enforced to clear their sidewalks. I mean, I think it just would be easier for the county to just take, I mean, in severe snowstorms where you're seeing feet of snow, to rent the equipment, use their equipment that they have, create an emergency contract to clear the sidewalks. We had an issue where we, we ripped out trees. We had to get the sidewalks because it was an emergency. Yeah. Everybody was on notice, but for the last two weeks, these sidewalks haven't been cleared and somebody died. So yeah. in severe situations, which I would consider yeah. this an emergency, how can we get the county to just clear? And also the other piece of this too, New York City, Suffolk County, they have a, uh, an item in their ordinance that says, if these commercial owners do not uh, clear the snow, then we as the county will take on the responsibility and right. build, and they'll build them back. That's not in this yeah. ordinance right now. So it's sending out a violation is one thing, and sending out a fee for $100 might be another, but that's not going to address the problem. It, it's well, not addressed. Well, we have to change it. We have to change it. Thank you. Well, right now, the, the tenant and land or landlord, they have contracts or leases that provide for cleaning of the parking lot and the sidewalks. They would, that's in their leases usually, and every store I've been to, they uh, complain about the landlord's not doing it or whatever, but, but there is a mechanism. If they start getting fined, they will, 
and, and the fine is high enough where not $100, it's $250. I think it was 180 is what I read. For 50 a day. So 50 a day, 250 a day. So it, it, it's going to mount up and they're going to get it done. And, and, and you know what? There are so many people out there that have businesses that do the cleanup. They're waiting for, for, uh, for work to do. Mm -hmm. So, but, but we're, we're trying to address it. There's a lot of problems. We, we're witnessing it today, you know, this whole last week, and uh, we'll probably be witnessing the next couple of weeks too. But uh, we are trying to address it. This, like you said, the first step, we're, we're, we're trying, we're getting it done as legal as possible so we won't be fought in court and lose. We don't want to waste time and waste, you know, uh, think we're doing the right thing and then end up with mud on our face. We're, gonna, we're trying. This one, this law we know is, uh, will stand the test. And one other question that I... Uh, and, and then wait one, just okay. one second if you, before your next question. Uh, Legislator Judy Jacobs. Okay. I just want to say one thing to you. Oh, you're finished? Okay. All right. We finished. definitely do have a problem with all of this, including in, Legislator Dunn, including even raised sidewalks, okay? The bottom line is that the county get, gives notice to homeowners along these roads, all right? and then penalizes them or fixes the sidewalk. I'm not talking about snow for a moment. But penalizes them, fixes the sidewalk, and then puts either a lien on the house or whatever the, the homeowner arranges with the municipality. Bottom line is, along county roads, not necessarily along Southwest Bay Road, because we have a lot of houses that face it, but most county roads, the houses back up to it, they have no idea they're responsible for it. And the speaker just said something which is absolutely the truth. On these he in these heavy snowstorms, the snow is feet tall. Also, the lawsuits that come in, the claims that come into our legal office, I don't know how many of us are aware of it, are astounding because all the PVC fences, when the snow is thrown, come down. Not the wooden fences, not the ones with breaks in them, but the PVC fences, it's like hitting something with a hard hammer and they all come down. So I think we really need to look at this on a much more comprehensive level. I don't know if it's, I happen to agree with the speaker, I don't think it's fair for the homeowner or impossible really to, when the snow is standing this high because it's been, t you know, thrown there. But then you have another situation where the county is, it's costing the county money for the way it's thrown. And I'm not saying that our guys don't work so hard during this. But there's got to be a medium there that we reach that it's, it's because, I'll tell you another place where it's become a problem. The nice bus people who are standing in the street. Yes, that was my second Which question. I have seen six or seven people standing in the street. During the day, you hope that the drivers are aware of it and looking at night. It's almost impossible. I really think this is something we as a legislative body, considering I think we all have the same problems should take up because it's it's so multifold in the way it affects the living in these areas. I'm telling you the truth. Honestly, I went through it. I had one all the PVC fences along an entire area of Woodbury Road down. They the county attorney's office were wonderful. They said have them file claims, but all that costs us money anyway. There might be an, a way we could do this where we're not creating what we're creating. All right, something good to think about. Thank all, you. For all that. valid, valid, valid things that we were attempting to right. uh, address. Uh, this is just like, like, like you said and like mm -hmm. we said. It's the first part of, of trying to, uh, uh, you know, this has been a problem my entire life. I've been here 64 years. Sure, and I, I think our, in the our last group 35, I've been on a main road, and I. I'm at a crossing area. Unfortunately yeah, for me, I'm my neighbor has a snowblower. My son comes with his snowblower. The guy across the street helps out. You know, I'm fortunate I have people that help. But there are people that don't have help to, to get clear a place on a, on a main road. So we're, we're trying to be fair to the uh, residents, but also fair to the people that have to use the sidewalks. Well, I, I think what Legislator Jacobs was saying too goes for our community group, and I think working together with the community at this point is imperative for a lot of different issues that arise on county roadways, and that includes involving the community. I was able to get a copy of this ordinance because I know a couple of people beforehand, but I can tell you that all the members of my group and most residents in these neighborhoods don't know how to do this, don't know that these meetings happen and this is even being proposed. Something that might make sense going forward is talking to the stakeholders, the 
people that actually live on this roadway and the civic organizations, all of them, and the community groups that are working to tackle this before proposing or writing up an ordinance that you're going to put on record and then not be able to really a adapt or change. Well, well uh, this, is, this is going to work, but for, for, the, for the rest of the, the problem, uh, we look forward to absolute uh, – your input on resolutions to this. If you, anybody in your group has a, some kind of thought to, to resolve this, please let us know because we will try to uh, incorporate my, my into our next piece of legislation sure. a, a resolution of this problem. Can this be edited or adapted or changed going forward? I mean, what's the process for oh, doing that? Oh, it can always be amended. Like Everything gets amended. Um, and then just the, the bus stops. I know that NICE buses and also the MTA buses, whatever they are, you have bus stops, especially in Bethpage, where they're comple completely blocked. You can't even stand and to get to them, you'd have to walk on the roadway. Who is responsible for clearing those? The, um, yeah, we are, we're okay. going to have to check that out so because there's one right across the street from my house, and they are standing in the street, too. Okay, so the, the and they always have for years and years and years. And the they, residents that I've spoken to, and I've spoken to probably close to 100 at this point, want the information on who clears bus stops, who clears the Long Island Railroad, tra uh, what is it, parking lots, and okay. also the county sumps. A lot of them line county roadways, and they're not being cleared. There's one in Old Beth Page on Brown Swamp Road that uh, is adjacent to a school, and parents have to walk their children to school on the street right now. So I don't know if that's also something. And the last piece, too, the overpasses by the northern state. Right now, there's only a small space where you have sidewalk to begin with. Those are completely impassable. So I watched a woman w walking on Southwestern Bay Road on Saturday. I don't know how she was going to physically cross the overpass because there's no shoulder. So it, when you talk about this, it's four feet of snow. So she'd have to go in the same lane with the car. Well, Is the county responsible for that as well or, or no? Well, let me tell you, I, I had – it was a senior center, and they, they used to have to go from their senior center to go shopping. So I had the, the guys at the jail come in and do the shoveling because we didn't have the manpower to do it. And then we found out that that – insurance purposes, we weren't allowed to use the uh, – because the guys in jail want to get out because fresh air. Yeah, these these are low crime criminals, guys with uh, having paid child support, guys who were DWIs and stuff like that. So they were able to go out and shovel for us, but they're not allowed to do that anymore. So we're going to try to find a way to get this because there's so many areas like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, you're going to find more. Yeah. You know, so but well, we'll uh, we are trying to address it. it it's a it's a, a huge problem, but you know keep keep giving us the in, input. And uh, let your legislator know, or let us know. Let the the uh, uh, Norma Gonzalez know, so we can incorporate whatever your resolutions are into our. If new I were to email you, I just if to find out the information about the specifics that I talked about, well, then would I be able to get right, information? Right. Give us, on, give on us. Uh, I don't even know your name because we. I, I, you didn't put a slip in. I would did. You, you know, would you fill out a slip uh, and yes, then give I us? I did. Yes, this is the second oh, you time did? I gave it to her. I took a picture of it if you need it. Okay, um, Norma has it on me. Okay, yes. thank you so um, much. Thank you. I'll email you about that that piece. And then also, just so we all know, where will this ordinance be housed? Will it be listed on the Nassau County website yes. so that people can see it? On, once it gets passed, it goes on the website. website. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Dominica Calfane, is it? Calafano. Calafano. 